Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-7. In our last episode, the group discovered that Johan the Lone Shark had probably set them up. Upon discovering the criminal mastermind had gained a massive reward versus the paltry coins given to them, the party considered a physical altercation, but were talked out of it. Calmer heads prevailed, and they opted to move inside the walls of Phoenix and get some rest, it has been a busy day. We rejoin our heroes as they speak with the proprietor of the Gateway Inn. Eight crowns! exclaimed Cabe Silvertongue. Does that come with a harem? The rest of the group began to argue with the man about the expensive price, but he continued to shake his head. Lady Irena finally got everyone calmed down and moved away from the desk. Sir, she said with a soft-spoken elven mage, we are weary and poor travelers with only a few coins to our name. Would it perhaps be possible, but was hastily cut off by the man. Eight crowns, plain and simple. You don't have it, you don't stay here. Go down to the road to the Phoenix Inn. Probably more suitable for the likes of you anyway. His grim look was enough to show he was not going to budge on the price. Sister Elaine and the mage bowed politely before leading the men out of the business but as they exited, Welby shouted, Look out! It's a rat! before slamming the door shut. Well, what do you want to do now? asked the half-elven Cabe Silvertongue. Fargus suggested that they try the Phoenix Inn, stating if other adventurers were there, they may be able to pick up some leads on some jobs. Lady Irena and Sister Elaine concurred, with the ranger pointing out that the exorbitant price being charged there was well within their means. As the foursome started to walk down to the other establishment, they noticed Welby was staring at something. What are you looking at? asked Sister Elaine. The diminutive man pointed over to the far side of the street where a very large and mean-looking dog paced on a chain outside of a building. Look at the size of that thing! I could practically ride it! Fargus laughed before pointing out that he would likely be eaten prior to getting a lift from that beast. A few streets down, the group spied a tilted sign showing the business to be the Phoenix Inn. An ugly, amorous couple next to a mule were under the sign, and trash was present in front of the building. A small herd of rats completed the visual as they fought over what appeared to be a finger, and each member looked at one another skeptically before spotting Welby O'Toole skip into the front door and enter giggling. The group rolled their eyes and moved towards the entrance as well as having to step over the kissing couple. It took several seconds for their eyes to adjust to the dim lighting, but then they spotted a smiling Welby shaking a man of dubious grooming standards. What have you done? exclaimed Lady Irena. The halfling grinned and spun three keys on his finger. I got us rooms. It was only a silver crown each. Can you believe it? Looks of distaste crossed the faces of both Irena and Cabe, with their elvish features wrinkling up at an, the unusual aroma in the room. Looking at the other, Cabe began to speak with the I, but was cut off by Fargus, who finished his sentence with, Love this place, and what a great price! Pointing to a note on the notched front desk, he was gleeful as he noticed a free breakfast in the morning and job postings on the wall. Welby addressed Sister Elaine and confirmed that she would be spending the night into the church and he had not gotten her a room. She nodded and thanked him for his forethought before telling him and the rest of the group good night. Plans were made for them to all meet in the main room of the business the following morning. The new friends each said their good nights and headed off to their own rooms. The cleric made her way back to the temple and rang the bell outside the green copper gates. A few moments elapsed before a hooded acolyte approached and asked what her business was. 
She proudly displayed the symbol of her religion and was granted access. She inquired if the High Bishop was available, but was told no. She explained that she needed to check in, but was chastised as she was several hours late. A heartfelt apology seemed to fall upon deaf ears, but she was granted a room and left to her nightly devotions. The next morning found most of the group in the common room of the Phoenix Inn. Fargus Stoutheart and Lady Irena had risen early and obtained a table in the busy chamber. Welby O'Toole and Cabe Silvertongue met each other on the stairwell and joined the pair at the table. How much are you going to stuff into your mouth? proclaimed the elven mage. The backwoods ranger paused for a moment and reached across the table for his spoon. Looking into her eyes, he began to shovel the contents of his plate at a double rate, causing Irena to shake her head in disgust. Food arrived for the halfling and half-elf, but was quickly eyed by the human male. The pair guarded their plates quickly, causing Fargus to laugh out loud and spit food out. He quickly stopped at the faux pas and apologized. After wiping stray bits of food from his face, he apologized. Look, mage, he began. I'm more than twice your size and need every bit of sustenance that I can get. Plus, I'm hungry, and we have a busy day today. I'm in a hurry to become the hero of destiny. Wilby and Cade looked intently at the drama unfolding as they slowly ate their meal. Be that as it may, began the elven wizard, I would respectfully ask that the table manners improve a bit. I am still a lady as well as an adventurer. With the holy woman gone, I would hate to see you end your career choking on crockery. The retort caused all three men to burst into laughter, which only increased as Welby shot water out of his nose. The mage smirked at the issue and handed the barmaid her plate as the table was being checked on. After a few minutes, everyone had finished their meal and began to discuss potential plans. O'Toole pointed out that he still needed to deliver the package and hoped that they could find Gregor Finewire and deliver it to him. Lady Irena confirmed that she had seen the man but had not paid enough attention to recognize him again. We will need Sister Elaine for that task or ask around about him to complete your mission, she said. The barmaid returned and asked if the group could please hurry as people were waiting for the table. The young heroes quickly brushed themselves off and Cabe kissed the young woman's hand as he slipped her a silver piece as a tip. She popped the coin into her ample bosom, then smacked the bard in the face as his foolish grin annoyed her. Yelling out to the other patrons, she announced that the table was now available and the group made their way outside to determine their destiny. When do you think the holy woman will be joining us? inquired Welby. The others shook their head, but Cabe piped up. She will have morning devotions and probably report to the head of her order since she got in late last night. I would say we probably have the morning to look around this city, I think. Irena and Fargus nodded in agreement and began to look at the bustling city. The pair noticed that Welby was eating an apple. The ranger inquired where he had obtained the fruit but received only a shrugging shoulders as an answer. Irena spied a fruit vendor not too far away and glared at the diminutive man. You nicked that! The rogue grinned, showing bits of fruit in his teeth and stammered out, Well, I thought it was free. The trio quickly looked around for potential problems with the guards and Welby wiped the juice from his chin. No guards, I checked that first. Lady Irena leaned down and stuck her finger in the man's face. You will not randomly steal items while we are in town. Do you understand me? The tone in her voice made it clear that she was serious, and O'Toole, wide-eyed, shook his head. Satisfied, the elf stood back up and looked around. The group decided that they needed to find a posting totem where jobs were frequently found. They headed back to the main entry, and Welby, bringing up the rear, tossed the apple core over his shoulder, hitting a man in the head. As a scuffle broke out, the group moved on with Welby extracting a banana from his pocket and peeling it open. Over there, said Cabe Silvertongue, and pointed to the center of the plaza, where all those people are. It's a posting totem. The group moved over to examine the notices on the cylindrical post.
we close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.